Hello, my name is Thelmo, and this is a quick lesson about automatic differentiation. Um, so first, why should you learn about automatic differentiation? And differentiation shows up everywhere. It currently powers the hottest and latest machine learning frameworks, such as Python, uh, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Flux, and everything deep learning related. Um, before we dive into AutoDiff, I'd like to first say what AutoDiff isn't. And there are some other ways to calculate uh, diff uh, derivatives with a computer. The first one is finite differences, um, which is based on the limit definition of a derivative. And basically, um, to calculate the derivative of a function with respect to one of its inputs, you, you uh, calculate a quotient where you evaluate the function twice at nearby points um, by using a step size. And then the value of this step size is very important as um, if you choose high values, you can get rounding error while calculating your derivative, while very low values lead to truncation error as you're trying to calculate something as h um, tends, uh, uh, tends to zero while dividing by it. Um, and also, you have to perform this, uh, this quotient for each one of its inputs, the function's inputs. Another way to perform differentiation in a computer is symbolic differentiation, which is basically an automated version of manual differentiation. So basically you provide the computer with a closed form of your function and then it applies all the known derivative, func uh, derivative rules. And at, as a result, you get the closed form of your derivative. And then you can evaluate this closed form of the derivative on a chosen point, for instance, x equals pi over six and y equals two. Um, but the problem here is symbolic differentiation can lead to something called expression swell, where if you uh, uh, apply the derivative rules, um, you end up with a derivative that, is, uh, that requires a lot more computational uh, operations than the original function. For instance, with the product rule, if one of the functions uh, in the product is actually a product of other two other functions, um, then these explodes and grows exponentially into a much more complicated function than the original function that you wanted to to, uh, to calculate the, the, the derivative. So uh, as a solution to these problems, you get automatic differentiation, which actually calculates the exact value of uh, the derivative at a certain point, um, which finite differences does not. And, and it also doesn't need to, do, to uh, be provided with the closed form of the desired function, allowing you to actually use um, uh, programming language structures such as loops and conditionals while building and evaluating your function. Um, the first way to perform uh, automatic differentiation is called forward mode, which basically just augments each intermediate variable in the evaluation of a function which, with its derivative, and you call the intermediate variable a uh, primal and the derivative a uh, tangent. So, for instance, consider the following fun function. Um, you can implement it in Python. And for instance, um, when you do that, you can have intermediate variables there, such as a and b, uh, which you then reuse during the evaluation of the function together with some operators. And then basically, you can represent that in a computational, gra uh, computational graph, which is also called a Wingert list, where each node represents each one of the intermediate values that you need to calculate while evaluating your function. And then at the last node, you get the result of the function. And what you do the, here is when you move forward through the, no, the um, Wingert list, at each node, you will also calculate the corresponding derivative there, the corresponding tangent. So for instance, suppose you want to calculate the derivative of f with, re with respect to x1 at the point 1.5 and 0 0.5, then you would get the values of each one of the nodes, um, we called it primals, you start with the actual values of the inputs, and then as you move through the nodes, you get the values for each, you get the value for each one of the nodes, and at the end, you get the result of the function, which is 2.017. But meanwhile, while you're calculating the values at each node, you also calculate the derivatives at each node, and then at each node, you apply 
the corresponding derivative rule to the function that is uh, inside the node. And you go node through node, and then as a result, at the end, at the, the very last node, you get the derivative of the function with respect to the desired input. Um, what is interesting there is, as you move forward through the, the graph and you reach the last nodes, you actually get the, the you can, if your function has uh, multiple scalar outputs, you can get the value of the derivative of each one of the outputs with respect to the desired input in a single forward pass. Um, um, so this is ideal if you have less inputs than outputs, because for each input you will get the derivative value uh, for all the outputs at once in the end. This is usually not the case in machine learning where you get more inputs than outputs. Um, when you have a, a programming language that, that allows uh, operator over, overloading where you change the, uh, the behavior of an operator, such as addition, multiplication, then it's very easy to implement forward mode as you just need to uh, overload the behavior of each operator and make it so it saves each of the, uh, it saves the result of the actual operation and also the corresponding derivative. And that's so simple that actually an implementation for that in Julia can fit in a single tweet, of course not with all, of, uh, um, all possible operators. Um, another way to perform auto diff reverse mode, it actually adds a separate backward path to the auto diff process, and that leverages the chain rule to calculate the derivatives. So the chain rule um, it allows you to decompose the derivative of a certain uh, of an output with respect to an input, and then add uh, intermediate steps there where you can do the derivative of the output with respect to an intermediate function and the derivative of the intermediate function with respect to the input. And so um, this, is, this can be applied to the computational graph where the derivative of the output with respect to an input, uh, which is a node in the graph, is actually the sum of, this, uh, of the chain rules over all its parents. So uh, we call that the adjoint, where the adjoint of a node is just the sum of the adjoints of each one of its parents multiplied by the, the, the derivative of the parent with respect to the child. So if we go back to the computational graph we had earlier, we can start at the right in the last node. Um, we have there the derivative of the function with respect to itself, which is just one. And then you go back one node and you have... Um, for node V7, for instance, the adjoint of its single parent, which is V8, multiplied by the derivative of V8 with respect to V7. And then you just move backwards uh, through the computational graph until you reach the first nodes, which are, which are just the inputs. So uh, actually, for reverse mode, you have a forward pass, and then you have a backward pass that goes node through node calculating the adjoints and as a result you get at the end the gradient of the function with respect to all its inputs. Uh, if someone uh, who's watching this has already implemented backpropagation they will uh, figure out that they are very similar. That's actually because reverse mode is a generalization of backpropagation. And it shows that this is very useful when you have a lot more inputs than you have outputs. Um, because at each backward pass, um, you, it's a, this is equivalent to calculating a single row of the Jacobian, and so that's very useful in neural networks, for instance. So, um, forward mode is more intuitive, although reverse mode is easy to understand for those who have uh, dealt with backpropagation. They are both uh, low in time complexity if you use them right, forward mode if you have less inputs, uh, reverse mode if you have more inputs. Um, reverse mode needs more space, but there are some solutions for that. See the, the links in the description. Um, and reverse mode is implemented in lots of uh, neural networks and deep learning frameworks that are available across multiple languages. In Python, you have PyTorch and TensorFlow mainly, but you also have Autograd, which is a package that uh, focuses mainly on uh, automatic differentiation. So thank you for your attention. I'll drop some links in the description with some references and further ma uh, reading material. Thank you and goodbye.